Hello fellow painters, uh, welcome back um, to the new recording. The new Baldur's Gate is out, uh, so I thought it would be very nice to paint some miniatures that are very close to the game. Uh, Loot Miniatures has some uh, cool minis inspired by the Baldur's Gate world, so check the website. Uh, in the today's recording I will uh, mix some uh, contrast paints with the uh, oil paints, not only oil washes, but uh, I will use oil paints for some um, weathering effects and for some uh, edge highlights so i hope you will like this recording if yes please like uh, subscribe to the channel comment down below and i will catch you the next time it's the first highlight I will use uh, the elf skin tone. Uh, this color is perfect for dwarves uh, because it is a little bit dirty. Uh, he is a blacksmith, so I don't think that he is caring about hygiene. And this color I will apply from above in my regular Zental Heil light way. Uh, in this step is uh, quite important um, to catch all of the muscle parts uh, so be careful with it and try to accent uh, all um, raised areas uh, of the muscles is basically the first sketch that we're gonna apply and we will work from here on further Pale flesh uh, has accented all the highest parts of his uh, muscles. I was not trying to blend anything at this step. I have only reduced the painted area. Blends will achieve for us, of course, the oil wash. In the next step I will paint with some oil washes, that's why I wanted to protect my uh, flesh uh, that I painted previously, that's why I use some matte varnish for the whole flesh area. Burnt Sienna is perfect to blend all our flesh tones uh, together and that's why I used it uh, in a consistency of uh, one drop of uh, oil paint to around 20 drops of uh, white spirit. Uh, my goal for here was to receive a wash consistency as you see in the recording. I applied uh, my wash to all of the flesh parts. Uh, in this step I don't care uh, how I apply it, uh, I just wanted to apply it uh, more or less evenly to all of the flesh areas. Uh, after we applied um, the wash color, uh, just leave it for around uh, 30 minutes to dry and then uh, we will uh, remove the excess of the wash. With some cosmetic pads, uh, I removed the, the excess of uh, my oil wash in the upper parts of the body. Uh, the process was a little bit harder. Uh, my goal for here was to uh, receive this nice uh, light reflections that I achieved uh, with my airbrush. So uh, observe your mini and uh, try the upper parts of his body to be brighter than the lower part. With the uh, off-white, I prepared my mini for the further uh, painting process uh, by adding some light reflections uh, on his uh, lower part uh, of the body. So observe your mini and uh, apply those reflections where you wish to. Basilicanum grey I applied 
to all of the hair areas. The goal for here was to accent all of the hair flocks uh, because uh, basilicanum grey will um, flow mostly in the recesses, leaving the uh, flocks in the upper brighter areas. So it will be much much easier to for you uh, in the further processes to see all of the separate uh, hair strings. I mixed the bane blade brown with basilicanum grey to uh, make a sketch for all of the hair strings uh, for a better knowledge uh, of uh, his beard and uh, to see uh, simply brighter all of the details of his beard. Paint Blade Brown is my first highlight for the beard and hair. Um, I will uh, paint um, the most raised areas uh, of his uh, flocks and um, single hair strings, leaving black between for a better understanding of the hair. With a 50-50 uh, mix of uh, ice yellow and paint blade brown, I will reduce um, the painted area of the single hair strings and single uh, hair flocks for a better light reflection. I will keep on reducing my painted area with uh, ice yellow. This will give me um, a further step to a better light reflections of the single hair strings and uh, single flocks. Uh, this will give me a nice white grayish um, color of his beard. Ivory is my last step uh, when, if it comes um, to his beard and hair. I reduce, uh, of course, um, the painted area to receive a nice white beard and hair. I think uh, Gore Grant of Fur is my favorite color uh, if it comes to all the leather parts. Um, I use it uh, quite often. It is great uh, for the basic color uh, and also great for the further uh, highlights like uh, edge highlights, like some damages uh, and some worn effects uh, of the leather. Applies it uh, nice and uh, evenly uh, to the um, leather parts that you wish to and uh, leave it uh, to dry of course. All the belts uh, I painted with uh, Basilicanum Grey because it is much much better than uh, Templar Black. Um, it is uh, giving me more light reflections uh, than the Templar Black. Uh, apply it uh, nice and evenly and afterwards uh, leave it to dry of course. For the tabards in front and uh, in the back, uh, I used uh, Agaros tunes. Uh, this is also a great color for uh, some worn leather. Um, as you can see, I'm using this color quite often. Talasar blue for his trousers would give me a nice uh, contrast between all of the uh, leather colors uh, that I used. Um, you can also use some greenish color for a, a better contrast uh, for these parts. It's basically the color that you wish to apply.
I don't hand steel, I used for all the metal parts uh, on the miniature, like these buttons, like uh, his belt, and of course um, for the tools uh, on his belt. And now it's time to get dirty. With the black oil wash, uh, I will cover the uh, whole bottom area of the miniature, besides his tabard in front of the back. And thanks to the magic blending properties of uh, oil washes, we will have uh, great deep shadows and all of the colors will perfectly blend together. Without waiting uh, that the black oil wash uh, dried, I applied um, directly the burnt amber oil wash to the tabard and front of uh, and um, uh, the back. Uh, afterwards, uh, after waiting around 30 minutes, uh, I used some cosmetic tips and uh, cosmetic sticks um, to uh, remove the excess uh, oil the, uh, of the oil wash. Don't overdo um, during um, the cleaning process. You um, want to have oil in the deepest recesses uh, of the mini. Um, that's why um, keep watching what you're doing and remove the excess only from the most raised parts of the mini. In most of the cases, I would use some ordinary paints to uh, apply some weathering effects and additional edge highlights, but in this case I wanted to try new things out, that's why I applied yellow ochre um, oil paint straight from the top um, to apply my weathering effects and uh, edge highlights. Uh, please remember that uh, after this step you need to leave this color for about 30 minutes to dry, otherwise you can easily remove it uh, with your finger. I mixed the black and white together to receive a grey um, oil color uh, and this one I will need for all the black uh, parts uh, of the miniature to receive some weathering effects and some additional edge highlights. I mixed burnt sienna and yellow ochre in a 50-50 consistency for uh, some weathering effects and edge highlight for all the uh, dark leather parts um, of the mini. As in the previous step, after we applied uh, um, the wished result, leave this color for about 30 minutes to dry, otherwise you can easily remove um, what you've done with your finger.
it's time to end the project that's why i started to preparing um, the base uh, for the mini that's why i applied with reg the regular sponge some metallic uh, color to the anvil and created some light reflections uh, of the sword and for the uh, rest of the base OSL effects are always good storytellers and in this case we do want um, to tell a story of a hard working blacksmith that is standing the whole day in front of a hot oven and the hot oven uh, shines on his um, front body. That's why use uh, off-white as a filter or ink color to apply a pre-highlight of the front body. It is time to apply the first color for the OSL effect. That's why apply uh, Vallejo ink yellow uh, for all the areas that you applied your white filter. The color from underneath should in best case scenario shines through your color. With Griffhound Orange, uh, I will create the faded away uh, light because you're further from the light source, the darker the color it gets. That's why um, at the very uh, end of your yellow that you applied, apply some deep shadows of the Griffhound Orange. Vallejo Red Ink is my last step for the OSL effect and with this color I will paint at the very far edges of the OSL to strengthen the light effect. To be reliable that this um, flame is very very hot and very very bright, I painted uh, with ice yellow the middle of the sword. <laughs> 